Job, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. You know, the contribution of the manufacturing sector to GDP in Kenya went from 10% in 2014 to 7.7% last year. What's the main reason for this, for this fall? Uh, uh, thank you so much uh, for this question. I would say that uh, we have been recording a decline uh, in the manufacturing sector contributed to the, to the GDP, as you have rightly noted, from uh, 2014 to 2018. And as it was revealed, revealed in the economic survey 2019, it showed that we are currently at 7.7 percent GDP contribution, as opposed even to last year when we were at 8.4 percent. Uh, 2016, 2017, it was around 9.2 percent. Uh, if you do a comparison between manufacturing sector GDP contribution to the manufacturing sector specific growth, you see that. Uh, there was a growth last year from 0.2% uh, to 4.4% manufacturing sector growth. Uh, that is a, a GDP contribution uh, in, uh, in dollar from about 6.48 uh, billion US dollars to about 6.84 US, uh, billion US dollars. That shows that the manufacturing sector is growing, but its contribution to the GDP is declining. That shows that there are some other sectors in the economy that are performing better than the manufacturing sector. We have some reasons that are, happy, uh, that are making this, uh, this to happen. We are an agrarian nation, whereby we highly depend on agriculture. You find that the agriculture is the one that is taking the, la the largest share of the GDP contribution. Again, the government has put a lot of investment in education. You find also education is taking a very big share of the GDP contribution. But again, if you get into these sectors and look at their specific growth, you find they're not doing as fast as the manufacturing sector. So that's what is what is making this happen, is the, the share of the pie. You find that other sectors are, 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 are larger than the, than, than the manufacturing. However, you're looking at how we can teach this to the manufacturing sector in favor, in a way that it can have a twin benefit. They can grow, the, the sector can grow itself. At the same time, the sector can contribute better to the GDP. There's some few issues that we have been trying to look at the government together. And you have rightly noted, like now, that now the prompt payment. Right. Uh, we have been accessing the market at the government level, uh, the, at the county government level, but you find that there's some, some delay in payment. You're looking at how the payment can be done promptly. Right, right. I mean, you know, we also kind of want to talk about some of the other things that we saw in the report. You know, uh, manufacturers are blaming corruption as a big part of the reason why, you know, Kenya's growth prospects aren't really growing as fast as they could be. Um, but last month we saw that the president during his State of the Nation uh, sort of uh, pledged to crack down on corruption. Has there been any action since then? Is there any new word on that? I would say that uh, that is a, a, a policy directive at a very high level and it requires a serious uh, coordination between uh, the presidency and uh, the executive coming down even to the junior most level. We find that the corruption is happening almost at, the every, uh, at most levels of, of the government. So you find that uh, for that uh, directive to, to take place, we need to have serious enforcement uh, that, is, that, that is really happening because we can say that uh, as a country we, 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 we are short of uh, uh, the policies that are, that are required to fight, uh, to fight corruption. So we need to see some commitments, we need to see some uh, dedication, convergence around uh, the, the presidential dedication. Uh, whereby he is interested to see that uh, the corruption has reduced in the country. But this, I would say that, uh, as it is, has rightly been noted by the barometer, uh, it is one of the major issues that has been noted by, 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 the, by the manufacturer. Because of the many inefficiencies that are coming with the bureaucracy, you find that uh, for one to be able to access a service is efficiently because probably you are learning short of stock, probably you have delayed for 30 days, 60 days, and you want registration of a company or something like that, you find that there, most time people people look for shortcuts, right. and it's through these shortcuts that have that have sometimes been created by 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 by, by, by many bureaucracies that now the rent seekers now are right. So we need to, to see a government looking into uh, enablers. We need to see ease of doing business. We need to see cost of uh, production going down, so that at the ease, especially at the ease of doing business, do not have a uh, lot of this rent seeking happening. Right. The report said that 47% of the people who were surveyed um, are only operating at about half capacity. Do you think that uh, some of the solutions that you just named would change that? Yeah, I would say that uh, 
in fact, as you have noted, about uh, about uh, about uh, about uh, uh, sixty percent of uh, manufacturers are operating uh, below fifty percent capacity, and uh, uh, the rest, about thirty percent, is operating uh, around three quarter capacity. Twenty percent is the one that has reported to be operating at full capacity. I would say, indeed, this is happening. Uh, there are some sectors, especially those that are operating below uh, or, or those who are falling within the twenty percent that are feeling the heat of the counterfeits uh, or substandard goods, illicit goods that are coming to the country. Uh, some of them, uh, they're doing this because they cannot be able to compete uh, fairly in the market. But again, we can note that the government has put some uh, traction on this, yet we are feeling that this is just a tip, uh, tip of the iceberg on what, on what they have uh, achieved so far. And you're looking at how we can regain our 40 market uh, percent market share, uh, of which is otherwise controlled by illicit tra uh, traded goods. Uh, so I would say that uh, at the utilization of the capacity, the, what you have noted, it is really indeed happening. And this is also uh, uh, touching on competitiveness of the goods that are coming from the, uh, these factories, because there's some, uh, some costs, especially what we call the, the fixed costs, that have to be paid at the end of the month, or even when you're doing the turnovers, they have to be considered. Uh, and if they're considered and uh, the production is not happening at full capacity, you'll find that uh, whatever is uh, produced in those factories becomes a little bit more expensive. So you're looking at how we can have internal uh, interventions, uh, that is at the farm level intervention, and also how we can have the government uh, trying to intervene on the market share, trying to intervene on the uh, illicit trading, trying to intervene on the cost of production, like now the cost of energy, when you're talking about the taxation policies that are in place, some of them we're feeling they're not fair for us. How, again, uh, all these, when it is blended together, is going to address the utilization of the capacity. Even this is happening when uh, when some companies want to pull out of uh, the country. There are some that are, that are pulling off because probably the cost of production in the country has become a bit high. Right. They're moving to Ethiopia, they're moving to Egypt. Uh, looking at how we can counter our regional uh, competitors in uh, some of these countries. Right. Joel, but just before I let you go, um, I wanted to ask, you know, the government said that it, it aims to raise the contribution of manufacturing to 15 percent of GDP by 2022. How likely do you think this is? Uh, I would say, as I had uh, already noted, is that the manufacturing sector is growing because uh, the economic survey 2019 and also the barometer has, so, has shown that the, uh, the, the value addition that happened in the last one year has increased uh, from a 6.48 uh, billion US dollars uh, to about 6.84 billion US dollars, of which uh, it's marginal increment, and we expect uh, to perform better. So the sector is 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 growing, but it's not growing as 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 it is envisioned within the Big Four agenda, or uh, or it's envisioned in the 15% uh, GDP contribution. However, as I noted, there's some sectors that are growing faster than the manufacturing sector. So we need to see some concerted effort. We need to see some bone-breaking policy prescriptions coming to the to the sector so that this can really happen. So we can see it is possible by 2022 it can, it can happen, but we need to see some concerted effort, more education, even in budgetary allocation, especially when, when, uh, now we're getting into, the, into a new uh, fiscal year, uh, fiscal budget for, for the government. We want to see this changing over time. Right, right. Thank you so much, Job, for, for joining us on the show today. And just the last question for you. Um, you know, the report says that 52% of manufacturers are optimistic about um, the economy compared to 39% last year. What do you think happened in yeah. just one year for that to happen? Really quickly before we go. Uh, I would say that uh, we have seen some first fiscal consolidation from the government. The government has uh, reduced on expenditure. They are concentrating on... Uh, uh, on the on the projects that are old, uh, which were uncompleted, they are going to be completed. Of which then, even the government expenditure goes down, we also ex expect the government not to overtax those who are already compliant. So, other fees optimism goes up.